Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Chakwadash, double honors to the apostles, elders, great most, and the well, peace and blessing to the elect. Shalom and above all. Back at it with another through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Lord willing, this video is edifying. Okay? And this is an exhortation at hand to bow thine ear. And to bow thine ear ultimately means to just listen up. When it comes to the words of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, you want to be in more of a spirit of being quiet understanding and listening and hearing out what the word has to say okay and really a true judge is really a good listener because as a judge which the lord is raising us up to be judges through his wisdom knowledge and understanding all right we have to listen up to what the scriptures is telling us so that we can be instructed all right this is proverbs one and one this is proverbs of solomon the son of david the king of israel to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding to receive the instruction of wisdom justice and judgment and equity okay which equity means going to the word equal all right ultimately fairness okay so it's to give subtlety to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion it says a wise man will so this is what the uh, the, the the wisdom of Yahweh Shemashai can give for you okay especially in the book of proverbs you know you got other wisdom books too like ecclesiastes uh sirach you know but all the scriptures has wisdom and things that you can take and add to you know to correct your life okay to make you instructed in the ways of righteousness you know the scriptures say all scripture is profitable for reproof for doctrine for correction for you know, a uh, way of life, you know, that the man of Yahweh Shemashai may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Roughly paraphrasing it. So these scriptures is what makes us wise. You see? But you have to be willing to hearken unto the words of the Lord and to receive it. Okay? And if you are a wise man, you're a good listener. Okay? The wise... Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Rock Ecclesiastes 21 and 26. It says, The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. Meaning what? That a fool always says what's on his mind. A fool, you know, you can tell what's on a fool's mind because he's always talking. He's always speaking forth what's on his mind, right? But it says, it says how, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. Meaning what? That a wise man, he mostly, the most of his talking he's doing is within his own and within himself. Because He's staying silent, you know, and uh, processing and listening, man, and hearkening, okay? You know, and you want to make sure that you don't, you're not a babbler, okay? Sometimes, you know, the spirit get on you and you, you might talk a lot, all right? Because the spirit is on you, you know what I'm saying? So that's a different story. But it's a different story between the spirit being on you and babbling, you know, and you got to know the fine difference, okay? But nonetheless, the scripture do tell us to... Let your speech be short, comprehending much with few words. Okay, let me get that real quick. Shrock so Ecclesiastes 32, starting at verse 7, it says, Speak, young men, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much and few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. Right. Just like a wise man says, how a wise man's mouth is in his heart. You see? But the heart of a fool is in his mouth. You know? So, by you always talking so much, showing your hand, so on and so forth, really makes you look like a fool. But the scriptures say, even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. So that's what we are to do. We are to hold our peace and listen. Hearken. Okay. Let's go back to Proverbs. Bow thine ear, man. Proverbs 1. Verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels, man. So when you listen and you hear, you hearken, you bow your ear, that'll help you increase learning, man. Get the precept. 
Shrock Ecclesiastes 6 and uh, verse 32 says, My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. Right. So you have to be coachable in this thing. You have to be willing to receive the information. You have to be willing to be instructed, right? And it says, if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. Meaning what? That you got to really apply your mind to the truth. You got to actually apply yourself to this thing, man. You can't just half step it, you know? And when you actually apply yourself to this truth, it'll lead to you being prudent in this thing, man. And if you're prudent in this truth, you'll be preserved from evil. It says, if thou love to hear, right? Not if you love to talk. It says, if thou love to hear, Thou shalt receive understanding, and if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. That's right. And the um, the, the elder apostle Gabar, he says this a lot. He says, you know, you were created with one mouth and two ears. That means you should be doing some more listening than you do talking. And it's so true. You know, so true. All right. Because your mouth can get you into some trouble. Your mouth can also get you out of trouble, too, though. But your mouth can get you into trouble. It says how the tongue is a little member, but it kindles a great fire. You see? So it says, let me read this again. It's Sirach Ecclesiastes 6 and 33. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt, thou shalt be wise. That's right, man. So that's what we ought to be doing majority of the time. You know, bowing your ear, listening, okay? Holding your peace, you know? Practice that. Proverbs 5 and 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Right. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. You see? So that's what we ought to do. Bow thine ears to the understanding. We're not supposed to lean upon our own ways. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust thine in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's right. So we are to acknowledge Yahweh Shemashai so our paths may be directed. But if you don't acknowledge the Lord and listen and hearken unto his words, how are you going to direct your paths then if you're not listening, man? Okay? You feel like you got the you got the way, and you know what to do. And you telling the Lord what you're going to do, right? No, it doesn't work like that, man. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, man. Okay, it's to say to be carnally minded is death. And the only way to be spiritually minded is if you take heed to the spirituality of Yahweh Bashmel Shai. Everything else is carnality. Okay, and evil. You see, so it says to be carnally minded is death, man. So to take heed to your own carnal ways and not take heed to the ways of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, that's taking heed to the ways of death, man. All right, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And what's the part of being spiritually minded? Hearkening unto the words of the Lord, man. Proverbs 2 and 1, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, set so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the Most High. So you have to apply yourself in this thing, man. Like it says, if thou apply thine heart, thou shalt be prudent. Roughly paraphrasing, you know, when you lose something or if you're seeking after something, you know, you go hard to find it, right? So how much more for this wisdom of the Lord? Like it says, if you look for this as for silver and for gold, because usually when people are looking for resources like money, they go hard for it. You know, they apply their mind to receive it. You see? So it says, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. And find the knowledge of the Most High. This is for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Right. Not out of our own mouths. Okay. Out of his mouth. So when we speak his words, then our mouths are going to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But in order for us to speak his words, we must first listen to what he says. All right. And there's a quote that I that I that um I've heard before. Where it basically says, um, you know, when you speak. When you speak, you say the things you already know. Let me see if I can find that quote. All right. 
It says, when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. You see? So that is that quote always stuck with me because it's actually so true. Because when you talk, you really are only just repeating the things you already know. You know? Okay? And it makes perfect sense. So we have to be in the spirit of being willing to listen more than doing talking, man. Okay? It says, He layeth up sound, Proverbs 27 says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Yeah, the Lord is a shield. He's a defense for those who walk uprightly. Okay? And it says, He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. You see, but that all starts with what? Hearkening unto his ways. Verse, verse 9, Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. You see? When wisdom entereth into thine heart, meaning your mind, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. We're talking about the wisdom of the Lord. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Right. And to be an understanding individual, you need to be a, li a great listener. You know? Now it says to deliver thee from the way of the evil man and from the man that speaketh forward things. That's right. So ultimately, this truth, the wisdom of Jehovah Shemashai is going to deliver us from the wickedness of this world. It says, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they are forward in their paths to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the God of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her re return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Right. Beautiful chapter. But nonetheless, the point being what? All right. You hearken to the you hearken and incline your ear into the wisdom. Yeah, I'm brushing my shine, man. That's what we hard to be. The scriptures say be swift to hear to get that precept. Strike Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 11. It says, be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere. Right. Which means pure. Okay. So it says, and with patience, give answer. Right. Because with patience, you're supposed to give answer because you have to make sure that you first and foremost, before you rebuke, you understand first, then you rebuke. You hear the full matter and then you rebuke. Okay. You don't just quickly give a rebuttal. You know. It says, with patience, you give answer. And as well, when you, when you do give an answer, you have to make sure that you're giving the right answer. Okay? At least when you're teaching. Now, if someone asks you a question, you know, to question you, to see if you know something, and you don't know it, you know, you can say, I don't know. You know? You're better off saying that and humbling yourself than trying to wing it and give someone the wrong answer. Okay? Because then there could be blood on your hands. The scriptures speak about how we're supposed to rightly divide it, the word of truth, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So ultimately, like scriptures all say, study the righteous study to answer. You know, scriptures all say, study to show thyself approved, man. You know, so we have to be in that spirit of with patience giving answer. And the scriptures say to be ready to give an answer to any man, you know, so. Ultimately, if you're being circumspect, you're being on point with your studying, you know, you've been uh, moving forward, you're going to get it on point, man. Okay? You're going to get it on point. And that way, when you do answer, you tell them the right thing. All right? Sirach 5 and 11. Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere and with patience give answer. All right? So you're supposed to, so, you, so the point being what? Be swift to hear, man. Verse 12, if thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Honor and shame is in talk, and the tongue of man is his fall. Right. Okay. But if you're listening majority of the time, and when you speak, you don't speak a lot, 
You don't necessarily incriminate yourself of what you say. Okay. You know, it helps keep you from a lot of trouble. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. It's Rock Ecclesiastes 19 and 6. It says, he that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Okay. That's it. That's it, man. So if you hate to talk a lot, you're going to have a lot less problems in your life, man. Scriptures say that. Especially when you're out amongst the camp, okay? You know, be a man of few words when you're when you're uh, in the house of the Lord. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of Yahweh Shai, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. All right? It says, be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before Yahweh Shai. For Yahweh Shemashiach is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. You see? So, point being what, man? Don't be quick to speak. You know? Keep your foot when you come into the house of the Lord. Also meaning, hold your peace. Don't be trying to, you know, do too much. Just listen. Like it says, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Because a fool, like it says, his heart is in his mouth. So, Whatever comes to his mind, he's going to say it. That's really foolish, man. The Lord ain't dealing with that. You know? So, that's really the exhortation at hand. Okay? Um, you know, Lord willing, this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Basham, El Shai, Basham, Double honor to the Apostle Elders, great most of the world, peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom, Amin, Ababa.